How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Donahue here. Once again, we're going to take a look at Electron Affinity. So our objectives are describe the patterns that emerge as a result of the organization of periodic table and the underlying reasons for these patterns, specifically electron affinities, and use these patterns to predict the properties of the related elements. So electron affinity, simply put, it's the energy change that occurs when an electron is added to a gaseous atom. It's essentially the measure of an atom's attraction to that added atom. So here I have a neutral atom and then I have an electron that I'm going to add to it. So an electron affinity is, hey, let me add an atom to that. How did the energy change? That's the electron affinity. So most of the time, energy is released, which means you have a negative delta E. So for example, if chlorine gas, you got an atom in the gaseous state, I'm adding an electron to it. The delta E is a negative value of negative 349 kilojoules per mole. So the electron configuration, you know, you can see we added one more electron and the most of the time energy is released. So this would be a good time to take a second and compare electron affinity to ionization energy because these two things are usually taught around the same time. So both are gonna be measuring changes in energy and that is true for both of them. But the difference is electron affinity is gaining an electron whereas ionization energy is losing an electron. So it's kind of the opposite process. Most of the time for electron affinity, it's a negative value uh, and energy is being given off. And for ionization energy, it's always going to be a positive value because you're ripping an electron away from an atom that it's attracted to. So it's always going to require the input energy. So, hey, am I talking about electron affinity or an ionization energy? Just take a look at where that electron is. If it's on the reactant side, it's the affinity because you're adding those together. And if it's on the product side, it's ionization energy because you're ripping those two things apart. All right, so back to electron affinity and trends. When going left to right across a period, it tends to become more negative. So you can see lithium starts off as negative 60. All right, negative 27, there's more than zero. Negative 122, more than zero. Negative 141, negative 328. So very loosely, it tends to become more negative. That's the general pattern. Exceptions, you probably picked up on those exceptions already, right? So if we take a look at group two, added electrons will need to go into the P sublevel, which is a higher energy than the S sublevel. So if I'm taking a look at uh, beryllium, its configuration is like the 1S2, 2S2. So if I were to add an electron to it, it would have to go to the P sublevel, which isn't as favorable. It's a higher energy than the 2S. So turns out, that value is going to be greater than zero. And that's true for magnesium. The same process is happening. It's going from the S added electron is going to the P sublevel. And you can see calcium and strontium still very low, not very negative values. Then if we take a look at group 15, which is like nitrogen, phosphorus, these, this group right here, what's happening is this P sublevel is full. So group 15, they have, well, it's not full, but each orbital has an electron in it. So when we have to add one more electron to it, they're gonna have to pair up, which I don't know if you know this about electrons, but they're negatively charged. So when you add one more electron, you gotta put it in the same orbital as another electron, and you're gonna get repulsion going on there because they have the same charge. So you can see there's a dip in the electron affinities at group 15 for that reason. Another exception would be group 18. Group 18 is the noble gases. If you take a look, the noble gases, all of the electron affinities for those is greater than zero. And the reason for that is the added electrons would have to go into the next principal energy level, which is a higher energy. So this isn't very favored. If you want those things to gain an electron, you're going to have to force it. You're going to have to provide energy for that to happen. Some highlights, not exactly exceptions, but highlights, things to check out. There's group 17 with the, the halides, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. You can see there's a huge jump in the electron affinities for these guys. And the reason for that is they're almost full for their P sublevel. The P sublevel, they have one, two, three, four, and five electrons. So adding this one missing electron gives you the noble gas configuration, the stable octet, which is very stable, so you get a lot more energy being given off. It's becoming a very stable thing when you just add that one more electron to its configuration. 
Electron affinity trends. Going down a group, it doesn't greatly change. There's no real pattern. So if you take a look, you can kind of see as you go down a group. There Maybe there is a little bit of a pattern, but it's not really any pattern. This one is almost essentially the same as you go down. So it's not enough of a trend to say that there there is a trend. So as you go down a group, it doesn't greatly change. They're all in the same ballpark for the most part. So applying this stuff, which would have a greater or more negative electron affinity, oxygen or fluorine? Well, if I'm taking a look, they're in the same uh, period, and they're next to each other. And, well, all right, which one's going to have greater electron affinity? Probably the one in group 17, the one that is so much closer to becoming a stable octet. Same thing going on, silicon or chlorine. You take a look, they're, they're in a similar situation silicon we have over here chlorine we have in the same uh, period chlorine is just one away from that stable octet so that one's going to give you a more negative electron affinity all right why doesn't as have a more negative electron affinity than ge well if you take a look at where as is it's in group 15 so again it's going to have that p sub level that has every orbital half full so when we add one more electron, it's going to have to pair it up, which is not as favored. Whereas GE doesn't have that problem as much uh, because it's got an empty orbital for an additional electron. That's a terrible box. Donnie, what are you doing? It's horrible. If I take a look at GE, it only has two electrons in that P sublevel, so it would be happy to add another one there. All right, well... Summarize. Describe the patterns that emerge as a result of the organization of periodic table and the underlying reasons for these patterns for electron affinities as well as the exceptions to those patterns. I hope you found this helpful. If not, I failed you. I'm sorry. I'll see you in class. Okay, bye.